so that was a lot of fun. We now have an inventory where we can add lots of items that we pick up. Now before I move on to using those items and removing things from that array, I want to see if I can just muck around and play with something else that we can put into the GUI. So before I even do that or explain what I'm going to do, I'm going to back up all these scripts that I've made so far, just in case anything goes wrong in this little experiment I'm about to do. So, where are we up to? That was video 212, so I'm just going to back these up. So this is after video 212, and I'm going to save it as a text document. Now, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, I mentioned this on one of them before, how save the script as a normal text document and now that doesn't get compiled by Unity or anything like that so if I go back to Unity there's no compilation I've just created a text document here and it's not used as part of the project it's just a text document so if I'm not using that as an asset then it doesn't even get compiled out there it is all the time so if I ever have any problems I can revert back to that text document and I can open it see it in the Explorer, I can read it there, or I can still double click on it and see it in MonoDevelop. Now as we've saved that as a text, this is now not the script, it's just a backup text document. So if, as soon as you save the text, close it, because that'll stop you from trying to edit it, and then nothing happening. And the same with the trigger volume. So that was after video 212, and save it as a type text document. And like I said, this is now the text document. This is not the script. It's just a notepad. Okay, what am I going to look at? So if I highlight the player here, we can see my inventory in the inspector, and we can see as we come into those trigger volumes and look at the item. We can hit E and we can collect that item. I want to see if I can play around with getting a way to show that on the screen. Kind of like a my inventory GUI. And I'm also going to toggle it so it's not there all the time, but if we want to see what's in the backpack, we can either hold the tab or we can just press the tab to toggle it on and off. I might just work with hold the tab, because that usually goes like multiplayer scoreboards, things like that. You just hold the tab while you want to see it. So let's see if we can throw that in. So of course we've closed our text documents. I need to open up the JavaScript again. Okay, so first I'll set up another Boolean. I'll make it private, so I'll just borrow from that. Um, this is simply going to be show inventory. And by default, set up boolean to false. Now, in the update, we want to check for a key being pressed so that we can toggle. Well, not toggle, we're just going to have it true while we're holding the tab down. So, in the update, just going to add a new conditional check here. If if input dot get key okay so that is while the key is being held and key code tab do we have tab yes tab so if input get key so while the key is being held every frame I'm going to set show inventory to true and then if we're not holding the, the get key tab, let's just set it back to false. So it disappears again. Okay, so we've set up a boolean. We want to use that in the GUI. So if show inventory, we 
image is the same way as saying show inventory is equal to true. Then we're going to create a for loop. And then we're going to put some boxes up. And then we're going to display the name of each game object in our inventory list of game objects. So let's put that together. So let's put the for loop part in first. Or variable i, which is just our counter, int equal zero, while i is less than what's the name of my list? My inventory. Well, i is less than my inventory dot. Now, when we did built-in arrays, this was dot length. Now it's different for generic list. Okay, it's not there. See, I've gone through and had a few look at other links to find out how this works. I've got it on my little list, my notepad list. Okay, so if I want to know the length of a list, we use dot count. Okay, so while i is less than my inventory dot count, semicolon. We're going to increment i. So let's set up some GUI boxes to display each name of each game object in the inventory. Um, GUI box. Let's do rect. And where are we going to put it? Green width uh, minus I'll keep the size of the boxes the same so, uh, 110. So screen width minus 110. I don't need the brackets there actually because I'm not dividing. Screen width minus 110. Now for each item, we don't want them displaying on the top of each other. So we want to start setting them so they fall below each other for each count of i. So let's just say, start off 10, 10 plus i times 35. So that should space each one 35 units down below the last one. And, I don't know, so if I'm making them 110 wide, I need to bring it back 120, so I've got a border there. So 110 wide, and I had 35 before, that's a bit large, let's make it 30. I'll even make that 130. Okay, so there's the rect, the rectangle. The x position, the y position, which counts down for each item, and the width of the box, and the depth of the box. And what are we going to display? Plus, okay, and this is where we can read things in our inventory. So my inventory, at what index position? At index position I. And that is going to return a game object. Now we can't print a game object in the GUI. We need a string. So the name is in the string format. So let's just say name. Alright, let's just save that and see if I have any errors so far. No errors, that's a good thing. Alright, so if I hit play, nothing's going to happen. Now what happens if I hold the tab? Okay, so nothing's happening when I hold the tab either. But that is to be expected because we haven't picked anything up. So let's just highlight the player there. And let's just go and pick one thing up. That up when you have an item, and if I hold the tab, there we have it. Key blue. Let go of the tab, we can see what we have in our backpack. Let's go and pick up another item. So we pick up two items, hold the tab, and there we have it. See? The loop has spaced out those inventory items. And then we'll go to the last one, hold the tab, 
and there we have it. A little inventory list that we can see on the screen. So that when you're playing the game, you can see what's in your backpack. So just for example, we walk up to a blue door. We don't want to hit the E when we hit the blue door and just for it to do nothing. At least we can check our backpack now. Oh, okay, I don't have a blue key, that's why it's not opening. Alright, so that was a extra little bit of fun. Now we should look at how to use these items.